Hi boys and girls and welcome back to another week of Children's Sunday School. I'm so glad you guys could join us today in this video for this week. We're going to sing a fun song that we sang a while ago, but I know that it's one that I enjoy and I hope it's one that you guys enjoy. It's I'm in right, out right, up right, down right. All right, so if you know it, you got to stand up. You got to stand up and you got to sing along with me. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right. So here we go. Happy all the time. That's the lyrics. It's pretty easy. Follow along, all right? So, I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from sin, I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. Woo! All right. That was good. That was good, but I think we can do better. I think we can go a little bit faster. Do you? All right, so here we go, and I'm going to sing it a little bit higher because I sing it really low. So let's try again. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from sin. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. Woo! All right, let's do it faster. Here we go. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, happy all the time. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, happy all the time. Sin, Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from sin. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. Woo! All right. That was really good, but we're going to slow it down. And when I mean slow, I mean super duper slow. All right. So here we go. Follow along. Don't go any faster. I'll know. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. I'm in right. Out right, up right, down right, happy all the time since Jesus Christ came in and he cleansed my heart from in. I'm in right out, right up, right down, right happy all the time. Woo! Okay. That was really slow. That was like really slow, but you know what? We are now going to go as fast as we possibly can. So you guys, you guys got to stand up, get in your ready positions right here like this. Get your feet moving a little bit because it's going to go really fast. All right. You guys watching? You watching? Here we go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm in right, 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 down, happy all the time. I'm in right, up, down, happy all the time. Since you're clearly making a little more saying, I'm in right, 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 down, happy all the time. Whoo, whoo. Good job. You guys did a good job. I'm so proud of you. You guys went super duper slow, super duper normal, and then super duper fast. So, good job. Proud of you. I hope you guys enjoy the lesson that Miss Gail has prepared for you guys today. We will see you at the end, and we're going to sing one more song there at the end. Well, hello, and welcome to Sunday School. Uh, I'm excited to be here, and I'm glad that you're here. And I want to thank Mr. Jack for leading some songs for us. And um, to, we are going to start with prayer. Last week, I forgot to start with prayer, so let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that we're able to meet together even though we're in different places. And we thank you that we live in a country where we are free to come together and worship you. And I pray for each one listening that uh, the Holy Spirit would work in their hearts and have them learn what you would have them learn. And I pray for me that the Holy Spirit would speak through me and have me to teach what you would have me to teach. We love you and we thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we are talking about Nehemiah. And just a quick review of everything that we covered last week. We looked at our timeline, and we found that it was way back here when the Jews went to Persia. And then they were allowed to start. Some of them were allowed to go back 
right here. And then we, our story of Esther and Ahasuerus took place right here. And then Nehemiah comes on the scene at the king, the king right after Ahasuerus. And this king's name is Artaxerxes. So that's kind of a timeline of how things are going. And last week, we learned that Nehemiah was the cupbearer to the king, which was a very high position. Uh, he had some responsibilities uh, of serving the drinks, and he also had the king's confidence, and he also was responsible to taste the drinks before the king did, so to make sure it was safe for the king. Um, <clears throat> but we learned that there were some people who came to Shushan, and they had just been at to Jerusalem, and they told Nehemiah that the gates were burned and the walls were torn down, and Nehemiah, the Bible says that Nehemiah sat down and wept and cried. He was so discouraged by this news. Now, this uh, Jerusalem was his hometown, even though he had never really lived there. They had been carried off, and his great-grandfather uh, lived there. But Nehemiah had never actually been to Jerusalem, but it was the city where his people were from. But more importantly, it was the city of God. And he said, you know, people are going to think that our God is weak if he can't even take care of his city. So remember how long he prayed? The Bible says that he prayed day and night for how many months? That's right. He prayed day and night for four months. And then when it was time for him to speak to the king, he was prepared So this is just a picture of what it might have looked like. And we also mentioned that it was really against the rules to be sat around the king. So when King Artaxerxes asked Nehemiah um, why he was sad, Nehemiah was a little bit nervous about it, but he told him about Jerusalem. And he thought the king might get mad if he asked time off. But the king said, how long will you be gone? And then not only did he... Uh, asked him how long he would be gone, but he arranged to have soldiers escort uh, Nehemiah and his people. He arranged for them to be able to go to the uh, cedars of Lebanon forest and get uh, trees. Uh, and he probably went to Jerusalem first and then went back to that forest. It wasn't very far from uh, Jerusalem. And we talked about the fact that it was 765 miles and this journey took about two months. So that's a long journey when you're riding on horses or camels. Well, <clears throat> it's a long journey when you're riding on anything. But they were probably riding on horses. Now, we know that they came into the city. And we don't know exactly how big their caravan was. We do know that he had a very big contingent of soldiers and guards. And he probably brought quite a few people with him to help with the building and help with other things. So we don't know for sure that there was this many, but it would have looked something like this. And can you imagine what kind of a uh, uproar it caused when this big caravan came into town, all these people and soldiers? And um, Nehemiah didn't right away tell them why he was there, um, <clears throat> but apparently the people were not threatened by him because it doesn't say anything that uh, they were a afraid, you know, and they were just excited that somebody who had a, a soldiers from the real king, Artaxerxes, uh, come into town. They, they thought it was, must be something big. So this is just a picture of what the walls of Jerusalem or the city of Jerusalem may have looked like. And, you know, the Bible scholars have a pretty good idea. There's a few things few things where they differ just a little bit, but this just gives you kind of a visual of Jerusalem at that time. And this is another um, map of Jerusalem, and if you printed off the papers, you should have a, a paper that looks like this, and this map looks sort of like my map, but they do theirs first, so for any blame, it comes to me. But anyway, the, the Bible tells us that Jeremiah um, was in Jerusalem for three days before he did anything. So first of all, he probably needed to rest after traveling for two months. 
And he might have had another reason. Of course, he's always listening to God. So, you know, God could be telling him this. But a, a more a human reason uh, would be that he needed to have time to make a plan. He knew that the walls were broken down and the gates were burned and that everything was in a mess. But he couldn't get up and say, you know what, we need to build these walls back. I'm not sure how we're going to do it. Um, I think we're going to need some new stones and maybe some wood. You know, if he would get up and do that, then people are going to think he was uh, not qualified to lead a huge, um, I wanted to say expedition, but that's not the right word, huge um, undertaking, yes, uh, of this kind. And so he wanted a plan, and this, um, of course, is just a picture of someone with a plan talking to someone else. So uh, I thought the first thing that we would do is just, Go through and name these gates so that you would know what they're called. And that is what this paper is for. Now, <clears throat> if you were going to do it by yourself, then you would read the Bible reference and it would tell you the name of the gate. But I have already read them and I knew we wouldn't have that much time. So I'm just going to tell you the name of the gate. And we're just going to start right here. And this is called the fish gate. And um, the, the information that I read says, you know, by the name of the gate, you can probably tell, not every gate, but most every gate, you can probably tell uh, something about what they use that gate for. And um, this is just my guess. You know, they probably, when they went fishing, they probably carried their fish back in through that gate. I don't know that for sure. And this gate was called the old gate. So the only reason I can think of for that was maybe it was the first gate there. And again, I'm just guessing. All right, this was called the Valley Gate. And so there were t actually a uh, valley on this side and valley on this side. But I guess this is the main gate they went out through to get to this valley. And this was called the Dung Gate. Now, you may not be familiar with that word, but it basically means trash or even manure. And I did read up on this one so I could explain why they had a gate that was called that. Now the temple was somewhere up in here. And as you know, they were constantly doing sacrifices and having animals there which uh, would provide the manure. And then they would also have ashes from the sacrifices. So this is where they took all that out. And I'm not sure they probably had a place where they uh, got rid of it. So that's why that's called the Dung Gate. And this is called the Gate of the Fountain. And I didn't make that so you could see it, but this was the Pool of Siloam. And if you remember, that was one place where Jesus healed a blind man. Okay, and then this is called the Water Gate. And maybe this is where they brought water into the city. The Brook Kidron went up through here, and um, we're familiar with that name. And maybe that's where they got water for some things. This is called the Horse Gate. And uh, I don't know if horses were only allowed in that gate or why that's the Horse Gate. But that's what it was called. And this is called the East Gate. And probably is called that because it's on the east side. And then we have the gate of Mifkad. So I don't know what that means either, but it sounds like it's named after someone or something. And then we have the sheep gate. And that's probably where they brought in sheep for the sacrifice uh, in the temple um, or even to have them in a safe place at night and they took them out during the day, I don't know. But anyway, those are the names of the gates. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten gates. And uh, that was at the time of Nehemiah. And I'm sure that probably changed uh, a few times through the years. I don't know how many there are now. But anyway, anyway, Nehemiah um, <clears throat> came to Jerusalem he waited for three days, and, um, oh, first of all, I wanted to answer this question 
um, it says, write how God feels about Jerusalem. And it tells you to look in Psalm 87, verse 2. It says, the Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. So there it tells you that Jerusalem basically is God's favorite city. Um, and so that was one reason that Nehemiah was so upset that the gates and the walls were broken down. All right. Um, I'm going to turn this over. Ugh, sorry about that. Okay. Now this is kind of like a diary of Nehemiah. And if you have a paper like this, if you printed it out, and mine's got the answers on it, so yours just has blanks. But if you want to fill that out as we go along, you can. Or if you want to do it by yourself, you can find the answers in these verses that it tells you about over in the margin. First of all, I'm going to read um, <clears throat> a few verses from Nehemiah. This is, this is what this diary is about. This is the King James Version, and this is probably the New International Version. Uh, I like some of the wording in the King James a little better, so I'm going to read this. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days, and I arose in the night, I and some few men with me. Neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, neither was there any beast with me save the beast that I rode upon. So he's going out with a few men. He's, on, he's the only one riding. The rest of them are walking. And <clears throat> he hasn't made known to anybody in Jerusalem yet why he's there. I went out by night by the gate of the valley. And I guess I should have waited to turn this over, but the gate of the valley was on this side. Um, <clears throat> even before the dragon well and to the dung port, if you remember, the dung gate was down here, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain, which was up here, uh, <clears throat> but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. So there were so many rocks and things there that had fallen off the wall that the horse could not get through. So Nehemiah um, got on foot and walked on up the brook, toward the brook, by the brook, and then it says that he turned back and he went all the way around and back into the valley gate um, to return to the city. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did, neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Okay, and so again we see that Nehemiah was, had a plan and he needed to make sure uh, why would he want to go out and look at the walls, do you think? Okay, he might want to know, well, there might be some sections that don't need much work, and there might be some sections that are completely broken down. He might want to see if there's some stones that have come off the wall that can still be used, you know, how much timber he might need for the gates. Uh, so we know that he had to assess the situation before he could make any plans. So after he did that, he came back and <clears throat> was thinking, and God, I'm sure, was, uh, he was seeking wisdom from God. But this is kind of like a diary that he wrote. Uh, and this, is, again, is in the Bible, but the wording is a little different here. So we're going to just summarize this. And if you want to, like I say, write the words on here, you're certainly welcome to do that. Okay, and this would be happened on his third night in Jerusalem. I got up at night, okay, so that goes in this blank, along with a few of my, that's right, men. I had not told anyone what God told me to do in Jerusalem. Uh, and I like the way it says in the Bible what God had put on my heart. heart. And then the second paragraph says, I went out by night by the gate of the valley and viewed the walls. I accidentally wrote walls on there, so I had to cover it up. And now I'm going to put it in red. So he went out to look at the walls, which were broken down. And the, what do you think goes in that blank? Right, gates, which were burned. 
Okay, now in this paragraph, for some reason, I left out a line, but we're going to add it in here. I went on to the gate of the fountain. So the fountain goes right here. And um, like I said, I don't know why I left this line out, but it says, uh, and to the king's pool. So I'm just going to put king's pool right down here. But you can put it in your blank. But there was no place for my horse to pass. Okay, then we go over here. Then I went up by the brook, and that goes in this, and viewed. Okay, what did he come to see? The wall. And then he turned back, the Bible says, and entered the city again by the gate of the valley. So he didn't go all the way around, but he went from here around to here and back and had a really good idea of what was going to need to be done. All right, it says in the Bible that the rulers did not know whither I went or what I did. Neither had I yet told the Jews. Okay, so there were other people living in uh, Jerusalem besides Jews, but the Jews were the, be the one that would be interested in God's city or the priests. And of course, the priests would definitely be interested in God's city or the nobles who would be the people that had higher offices and things like that, or the rulers. We've already mentioned that, but they meant, the Bible mentions it again. And then the last one is the rest that did the work. So this is a summary of what he did that night. Now, after he did that, the Bible tells us that he gives the people a pep talk. What is a pep talk? Okay, well, if you've ever played sports, your coach is probably giving you a pep talk. You know, if you've got a hard game coming up, uh, he or she might have said, well, you know, we can do this and we can do this and we can shoot with the best of them or we can play defense. You know, you've got to get out there and win this game. Or maybe if you had something hard to do <clears throat> at home, your parents gave you a pep, pep talk. Now, I know you can do this. This is hard. You've never done this before, but I believe you can do it. That's a pep talk. So when you're giving somebody a pep talk, you're trying to make them think they can do it and that they should do it and they can be confident about it. So Nehemiah gave him a pep talk and he said, look at the walls of our city. So they're torn down. The gates are burned. This is a disgrace. So he kind of he started off on a negative note. He said, people are making fun of us and people are making fun of our God because of the way the city looks. He said, but we are going to rebuild this city. The good hand of God is upon me. And he's given me instructions. And the king has sent all these soldiers to guard us while we're working on this because the people around us may not want us to rebuild these walls. And he has given us permission to use the cedars of Lebanon. And my God is going to make this happen. We can do this. And so the people said, let's rise up and build. So his pep talk worked, and everybody was ready to go to work. Now, <clears throat> it says in the Bible, it tells you um, wh who worked where and all that, but he put people close to where they lived on the wall. For example, oh, I don't have my map anymore, but for example... If I lived right here, he might have my family working right here on the wall. And he had the priests working close to the temple and also close to the sheep gate because they were interested in the sheep and how they came in because they were the sacrifices. So why do you think he wanted everybody to work close to where they lived? Okay. If I am working on a wall and I know that it's going to protect me and my family, I am going to be sure to do a good job. If I'm working on a wall and I have no idea, you know, who's going to be protected by it or what the purpose of it is, you know, I may build it, but I'm not going to take the extra time and effort to make it the very best probably. So Nehemiah was very wise in assigning, he, he divided the wall into sections and he assigned each section to a group of people. Okay, and I just brought a few pictures that uh, show us what it might have looked like. Uh, well, let me show this one first. This is uh, what it might have looked like when Nehemiah 
uh, only shows Nehemiah in this picture, but you see the gates are broken and the walls are broken down. And here's another one that's a little more realistic. Uh, it's kind of hard to see because it's dark, but it shows the walls broken down. And then one more. I just couldn't decide which one I liked the best, so I got them all. And here's another one that shows some men with him, and he's holding a torch so he can see. So these are just, you know, some artist's idea of what it looked like when Nehemiah went to inspect the walls. And then here are some pictures of people actually building the walls. And uh, again, we don't know exactly what it looked like, but they're losing, using some sort of pulley to uh, lift the stones up. And this one, they've got scaffolding built so that they can climb up on there. And uh, here they're using... Again, uh, there's, these stones were heavy, so they had to figure out a way to move them and put them where they need. This was a huge undertaking. You know, it's easy for me to stand here and say they built the walls of Jerusalem, but it was not easy for them to do that. But the good hand of their God was upon them. And then um, I just have one picture, uh, and this is a modern-day picture of the Valley of the Gate. So that's what it looks like. I mean, the gate of the valley. That's what it looks like today. All right. So we've got Nehemiah has checked out the walls, and he has started the building. He divided the wall into sections, and he put certain people at, at the section that would be the most important to them. And everybody is enthusiastic, and everybody's building, and um, <clears throat> add. Um, adversaries are about to rise up on the horizon. And adversaries means enemies or somebody that's going to try to keep you from doing what you want to do. So we're going to talk about that next week, and we're going to find out how Nehemiah handles adversity. I'm sure that we can already guess because he prayed for four months before he even started this undertaking. And um, so we're, we're pretty sure that he's going to pray about it. And we're pretty sure that God's going to give him some wisdom. But next week, like I said, we are going to find out who tried to keep them from building these walls and why they tried. And then we're going to find out what God, through Nehemiah, did. And then we're going to find out how long it took them to build the walls. It was record time. And then we're going to find out how they celebrated. But today, we're going to wrap this up. And with our Bible verse, this is the part that tells us that God put us here for a certain task. He put Esther in the palace when he needed a queen there. He put Nehemiah in the palace when he needed somebody to come back and rebuild the walls. And he's put us here for a certain purpose. And I think that's really exciting. We're just going to read the last part of the verse again. And has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. And he's just talking about every single person that has ever lived. God, before he even created the world, knew where those people were going to live and what their life was going to be like and what they were going to do. He knew who was going to follow him and who was not. And he knew that you were going to be sitting in your living room watching me today and that I was going to be standing here talking to you. So um, <clears throat> I was just reading on my devotion this morning that God is all wise. And we know that. So he will never tell us to do anything wrong. If we follow God, we'll always be in the right spot. Okay, so that's my advice for you today, and my advice for me is to follow God. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the history of Nehemiah, and we thank you that he was a man of prayer. We thank you that he sought your wisdom and that you blessed him as he led the people in rebuilding the walls. And Lord, we pray that we would seek your face as to what you have for us to do and um, we just um, love you and want to obey you in Jesus name amen okay don't forget to print off some of these things and we will see you next week I hope you guys enjoyed that lesson we're going to sing uh, one last song here uh, I have decided to follow Jesus it's, an, it's a really easy song so uh, 
Let's sing from our hearts and let's sing out together, all right? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with, though none go with me. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. 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 No turning back. No turning back. Good job. Good singing this this, uh, this week. I hope you guys have enjoyed the songs and the lesson. But uh, make sure that you guys, again, are paying attention to the lessons and everything that's going on in these videos because we really want to be a help to you during this time. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye.